So look at breaking this structure and pulls strong inside. So it, it's like the connection, if you like, it's, it's strong, he can resist. And quite often what he'll do is he'll kind of resist as a mass. So instead of like resisting by trying to push and pull me around, he just resists. So you're going for a takedown and for some reason it stops to work. So we have to understand that, first of all, where we apply our hands or our body has to be optimum places. Um, an example would be pushing at the hip. If I push square into the hip, it push back, it's quite easy for him to resist. If I push from the side, it's quite easy for him to resist. If I push that way, see how it wants to go. So for him to resist it, he has to put more of an effort into it. So the first sort of thing to do is have our accuracy correct. You know, have our accuracy so that we're at the point where we're going to be able to get the most bang for our buck, if you like. You know, I'm not trying to use a lever shortly. I'm trying to use a lever as long as I can. I'm trying to maximise on what I'm doing. This drill is all about where I'm working with Paul, and I know he goes to attack or whatever, and I escape him, and I try to put him down, and I get resistance. That's what this drill's for. Now, he's resisting me. I'm trying to push him, and he's now leaning forward. This is what this drill's for. But this is like a preliminary, like a, like a starting drill, just to, to try and get the idea. So the general gist of it is, is using this sort of kind of one joint principle of choosing what the initial vector is of his resistance. So to make it really simple, and I've explained this once before, I put my hand on here and my hand on here. And all I'm trying to do is, if you just relax for a second, I'm trying to make him go over like this. I've maximised my opportunities because I've got my hand on his sacrum, which is at the level of the load that I'm trying to shift. And I've got my hand on his forehead, which is the longest lever that I can achieve between the load and here. Here would be a shorter lever, here would be ridiculously short. I'm never going to shift him here. I might shift him here. I've got a good chance of shifting him here. But anyway, he resists anyway. He's still resisting it. So he's resisting in two ways. He's stopping me pushing his hips and he's stopping this going here. So if I then do that, see how it breaks the structure. So he tries to stay on his feet. See, it starts to go. So we've got to understand a few things. The basic structure of the spine, so if his back's nice and straight, and I push down on it, it can carry me all day. But if his spine was slightly off, it's like his spine was slightly off, it doesn't have to be a great deal, it becomes easy to make him fall over. If you just let your spine go off, and that'll be strong, it still goes down. I need to, I need to apply some force, I can apply force using my arm, or so you make it off slightly, and that resist. Or I apply it with my body, in which case I don't need to use any strength. But first of all, I've got to achieve that. So am I be that I'm working for some reason I've gone in, he's he's calls himself to be strong now. Here, the resistance is this way and kind of that way here. And it's important that, you know, whatever crazy position we end in, these are not picture perfect, you know, great positions for takedowns, but you know, maybe I'll get a bully choke on him, I'm pulling him down, he resists. You know, whatever it is I'm going for, I might be pulling this and pushing this. This is still a static drill, so it's still false. I'm trying to get through, so you can't use this. You know, um, I'm trying to drive him forward, drive him this way, he's resisting. He's out of his head. It's almost like he draws support from a spot. You know, so I'm trying to do this. Now that wouldn't work if I just place my leg here. Because he's got nothing to resist. But if I'm trying to get him over, that's what I'm working with. So there. So 
there we had kind of like a moment where you stand and go, and then you adjust it. Then have to do it again. Things aren't really neat. You know, like, so if I'm working against Paul and he's resisting, and then he starts to resist again, then I have to change again. Like here he might resist pushing his knee, and I have to do it again. You know, here, again. So I don't try and do things in a linear line. We get too used to in martial arts. Martial artist gets hold of wrist. Martial artist turns wrist, man falls over. I mean, in our head it's from here to here. We get hold of here, we're in, we're into the throw, he falls over. But when you're fighting, I get to wrist, I turn like this, relax, and then he resists, but we're grabbing his own hand, and we end up struggling for it. From here, same principle. Because that's what happens in a fight. He's not a martial artist, he doesn't know if you twist his wrist, he should fall over. So I go to turn wrist, block it, we're strong. And it's not actually the wrist lock that's making him fall over. There we, there's obviously an opportunity for it again. See how it's, it's his structure that's going. The more outside of his shape he is, the more we'll go. The, the more in his shape he is. So doing it from here, this is the hardest thing. Mm. This is the hardest thing, you know, attacking him here. But he shouldn't be resisting if he stood like this, because he shouldn't know it coming. It should be just bump, we should be in, doing our thing, you know, and it sh he shouldn't know about it because obviously he's just the, the victim to us. But realistically, he's going to be doing something, attacking or grabbing or whatever it is. Now look, his structure's gone. So if I start trying to take down, he starts trying to resist. That's when this stuff comes in. It's, you know, if he doesn't resist, you know, he gets a punch and I catch the moment, then he falls over. They try to resist. Which is good. Keep it There's resistance there. Oh, take it off. I'm kind of labouring the moment where he resists so you can see it. Okay? support his life. For some reason he's lunged or whatever, he's come and he's ended up in some crazy position. Not a particularly effective attack, but for some reason he ends up leaning on us. If he ends up leaning on us, take that spot he leans on away. Don't hold him up. It's like he needs that support. He needs that extra leg to hold him up and you will become it. Okay, same thing can happen. I can be pulling back here and he can kind of sit back on me a bit. I hear him resist. I'm going to take it away. Taking away the support that I'm giving him. Um, same thing, I've got a fall on the floor and I can be working with guards. You know, he's pushing against me. There. Again. You know, we're working. He's not particularly effective with guard passing, but he's pushing on me. He's trying to drive my weight onto my hips a bit. And I use that briefly. And I go with it. The same principle works whether you're standing on the floor, doesn't matter. Same principle. So have another play with it. Play it standing and on the floor. Play with the feet on the knees, on the hips. I can even do it. Come, give me your hands again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I might be working sort of like, sort of more from like spider gun. Here he's bearing his weight on me. So like if he was just trying to get, well, trying to work more, that's it, that's it. Here. See how he starts to go. He's now pushing this way. There. Still static, but we're getting this idea, this concept. Have a go. Yeah. 